Hi everybody, Charlotte here from Not Just Travel by Charlotte in the UK and I thought it would be really helpful if I made some videos talking through all the amazing fusion colours because when you're shopping on the internet the pictures can be a little bit skewed, you're looking at examples on Paint It Beautiful some of them are in really bright light, some are in dark corners, some have been edited um, so they're really not a great way of using as a source for choosing your colours so I thought if I talked you through, did a little video, I'm going to do, don't have any videos, I'm going to do one for the neutral shades, one for the blues, one for the greens, one for the reds and yellows, and maybe one for the metallics. So there'll be sort of a, about five videos just talking you through the different shades to help you because there's many ways that you can choose your colour. It's always best to choose the colour in the actual room because you'll have different light. You'll have maybe blue light, yellow light, white light, synthetic light, natural light. You'll have different components in your room that when you put colours next to each other, they skew each other. So it's really always a good idea to pick your colour in your room um, rather than somewhere else where the lighting and the whole environment is different. So you can either use the Fusion True um, colour, um, they call them True to Colour cards because they're actually, like, they're not printed samples, they are painted swatches. Um, their colour cards are really the correct finish, the correct colour. They're really, really accurate to how the paint itself dries. So that's option number one, to purchase off my website a Fusion True to Colour um, colour card. Then option number two is to purchase a fan deck. So these are the fan decks, and that's what I'm going to be using to talk you through my video today. These have um, much bigger swatches, and they also have a section at the end with recipes. So there's like 50, 60 odd colours in the Fusion range, I've lost count because they keep adding them. Um, but in addition to that on here, there's like 50 extra recipes, so you've got over like 100 colours here. And when we talk about recipes, they are easy recipes. It is either a 50-50 mix of two colours, or buy a pint, um, what you call in America, and what we call in the UK, 500 ml or a tester um, and mix them together. So yeah, sorry, that made no sense. There's two options for the recipes. You either mix 50-50, so equal parts of two colours together, or you buy a full-size jar and a tester and mix them together. Um, and that's how you create your additional colour. So the fan decks are really, really awesome for just giving you that extra little bit of choice because there's always more colours out there. And you know what, Fusion use really, really high quality pigments, really high quality ingredients, amazing paint. So I remember back at school when I used to mix cheap paints back together, and the more you mix them, you start to get muddy, horrible colours. It always goes a little bit brown. With Fusion, I mix them over and over and over again. If I mix a colour and I have a little bit left over, I don't chuck it away, I save it. And I use that the ba as the base for my next, say, pink that I'm going to mix or green that I'm going to mix. And I just keep adding to it and it never turns muddy. So you have got limitless options um, of the colours that you can create with these fusion paints. They're absolutely awesome, which is why I use them every day. And kind of resist being a stockist as well because I just love working with this brilliant company. So that is a, um, a bit of a brief introduction. Now, shall we talk through the neutral shades? This is the selection of neutral shades from white all the way through the creams, the taupes, the beiges, through to the chocolatey shades. And you might think, oh my God, that is such a lot to choose from. But you really, you really need this selection of neutral shades and you'll understand why when I talk through them to help you pick um, which one you might want to which one you might want to um, paint your piece of furniture or your room or whatever your project in because they will have different undertones some of them are very white some have yellow green pink undertones and you will need to select the perfect neutral to match with all the colors in your room so they don't clash and so they're complementary and um, there are a couple of shades in here which really are chameleons that if you're a bit stuck um they work in every project um so we i'll walk you through them one by one Let's start with Picket Fence. So um, I don't know how well these colours are going to come across on your screen, but hopefully my explanations will help you just to compare them to the colours you know. Say you bought a tester pot and you want something a bit warmer or a bit lighter or a bit darker, this video should help you to know which direction to go in to achieve that. So Picket Fence is a Fusion Mineral Paint's brightest white. If you want a real, true, true white, Picket Fence is the way to go. And then the next one we have is casement now picket fence and casement are very similar there's not a big difference between them but i would say casement is just the tiniest bit warmer and i would always recommend casement to people that are trying to match into sort of i call that ikea white it's not bright bright white it's just got a tiny bit of softness to um take that sharpness off of it 
And now top tip, when you are painting with whites, you need to be really careful about bleed through. If you don't know um, about bleed through, you're welcome to give me a call, drop me a message through the website, through the Facebook page, and I'll talk you through it. Let's not get distracted, which I do easily um, for now. But it's a well-known fact that whites take additional coats. So where there's a lot of fusion colours in, um, the, I mean, the first coat looks like it's covered amazing, but two coats are always a good idea. Um, when it comes to the whites, you're going to need additional coats, depending on what you're covering. If you're covering a light colour, we're talking maybe three coats. If you're covering a really dark colour, like a mahogany or um, a black or a dark grey or something, you're probably looking at four, potentially five on a bad project coat. So um, that is not a problem with the paint. That is just the way whites work, the way the pigments work. They don't have lots of interlocking pigments in there, creating layers. It is just a pure, pure colour, which means you're going to need to... Um, build up more coats. So they are your two bright, bright whites. Should we put them to one side? I've taken these out of the fan deck just to make it easy to sort of show you. Okay, then next, we've got Victorian lace, which is, as it says on the tin, it is the colour sort of like Victorian lace. And it's beautiful. It's just slightly greyed off, slightly grubby. If you don't want that bright, bright white, you want a white, but a softer, um, more vintage kind of feel. Vintage lace is the one for you. What does it say on the back? Romantic in every way, this multi-tone white is perfectly balanced between warm and cool. The shade inspired by the intricate details of its namesake. So there you go. That is a beautiful colour. Um, it's going to work with everything. It is great for vintage projects. <coughs> Excuse me. But it's also great in um, modern projects where you, you want a white, but you just don't want that sort of stark bright white. Next, we have parchment, which is, let me put those down for a second. Maybe it's best for me to put them next to each other so you can sort of see how they compare. So we're, we're still in the very pale area of the neutrals now. Parchment just has the slightest tint of green in it. So if you have other greens in your room that you want to tone into, it's very, very similar, not a million miles away from vintage lace at all. It just has the tiniest, mintiest, sort of undertone to it which will make it tie in nicely with other greens so maybe that is the neutral for you next up we have raw silk now i've actually been painting in raw silk today you can probably see it on my knuckles on my fingernails um raw silk is a classic it's timeless it matches i think with everything it isn't too it doesn't have too yellow or too pink or too green it is just a real classic it looks quite pale but it's definitely a cream it's got if i had to say what undertones it had to it very slightly no you know what i was going to say it's very slightly yellow but it's not i'd say it's a midpoint between yellow and pink which just makes it perfect for everything really really popular shade um, and then if you are looking to sort of go a little bit darker and you've got limestone next to it, which I would say limestone is a sort of classic clotted cream, very vintage colour. Um, it's got a lot more yellow in it, a lot more yellow in the bases. And we're now starting to step up to a slightly darker shade. And then if you wanted to go even darker, the next neutral that we're looking for is plaster, which is... Um, got slightly more grey in it I'd say just makes it that little bit darker and um, plaster is a very vintage kind of colour um, how do I describe what it sounds like not too white not too yellow but not quite beige balanced blonde that works perfectly throughout so yeah that is it actually it is kind of like a blondy colour almost sandy um, so they really are your three warm creams that we have they um, give you options there, they're really, really useful. And then next up, we have Champlain. So Champlain is a very popular colour as well. So what we're starting to do now is, is um, I would say, how do I, let's look at Champlain next to the raw silk. Let's get rid of those two. I'm trying to think of how to show you so that they're really obvious. So I would say that Champlain is, raw silk is very fresh, um, whereas Champlain is just that slightly bit softer. Sometimes in your room, I'm going to use the words grayed off and a bit grubby, and you might interpret those um, negatively to be like a bad thing, but actually they are wonderful. That just means that your um, colours have a little bit of depth and a little bit of mood to them, and they're a little bit more sophisticated. We don't want primary and secondary colours here, do we? We want colours that have been really 
um, scientifically put together to be on trend for a long time and to be beautiful. And I think Champlain does that. So there you can see it's just very slightly darker. Then we've got raw silk here and Champlain there. Very slightly darker, very slightly greyer, but not as yellow, not as creamy as your limestone and your plaster. So there you go. Can you see now, now that we're talking through it all, why you need so many colours? Cool. Next we have cashmere. This one is cashmere here. And you can see the cashmere is considerably more pink than your Champlain. Champlain has those sort of greyed off yellow undertones. Cashmere is warmer and pinker. And I personally think you have to be very careful with the colours that have yellow undertones because using them in the wrong place, they can look like um, you painted something white years ago and old water, uh, sorry, old oil-based white paints would yellow over time. You know how your skirting boards go yellow, um, you see plastic going yellow over time because of the oil content in it. Sometimes, <coughs> excuse me, I've had a cold, just a little bit of a cough. Um, sometimes slightly yellow undertoned creams and whites can look like you tried to paint them white and they're just old. So that is why I am a big believer in these slightly pink undertoned neutrals. They're really, really beautiful. They warm up the space. They feel cosy. So um, cashmere is lovely for that. I think it's a really, really beautiful shade. You can see next to champagne and cashmere, you can see how they have the slightly different undertones in them. Then we have Chateau. I mean, you've got a neutral for every occasion here. So Chateau is just slightly more greyed off. If that's a little bit too pink for you, Chateau is a beautiful shade. And um, fun fact about Chateau, everyone was really, really upset when Goddess Ashwagandha was discontinued, which was a gorgeous sort of natural stone colour inspired by um, Ashwagandha root. And it was such a popular one, um, that whole range was discontinued, so it had to go as like a bit of a package deal. But Chateau is near on exactly the same. So if you loved Goddess Ashwagandha, then Chateau is a great substitute. That is the one for you. What do we have next? Okay, now next we have Cathedral Taupe. So now we're starting to get into the slightly darker, taupe, beige shades rather than the creams. And I think that it's great to put... So here we have cashmere and cathedral torps. It's great to put those together. So if cashmere is a little bit pale for you, cathedral torp does the same job, it's just a little bit darker and vice versa. If you love cathedral torp, but it's a tiny bit darker, you want something a bit lighter, a bit brighter and fresh in your room, cashmere is a perfect, um, slightly lighter version. So there we have um, another option for you. Oh, putty. Putty is so popular. I would say cathedral Raw Silk, Cathedral Torp and Putty are the three neutrals that I use the most. Maybe I should utilise some of the newer shades, but I've just been using these for years and I love them. They work, they do the job, they're timeless. So um, I'm kind of loyal to them, I kind of love them. So you can see that Putty is slightly less pink than Cathedral Torp. So if you put that in your environment, in your scheme, and it looks a little bit pink, you want something a little bit softer, a little bit greyer, but a similar kind of tone, level of darkness, then Putty is the one for you. It's a really, really lovely, lovely shade. Let's pull up, I would say, in the same way that I said, in the same way that I said that we've got here Cashmere and Cathedral Torp, uh, the same um, kind of tone, just one's a bit darker and lighter than the other, I would say that Putty and Chateau are uh, um, partners in the same way. If Chateau or the old-fashioned goddess Ashwagandha was a little bit too pale for you, then Putty does the same job. Oh, butterfingers. Then Putty does the same job. It's the same sort of lovely stone-coloured neutral, but a tiny bit darker for you. So that you've got all the options. You've got so many options. Fusion are wonderful for this. They create such beautiful colours so that you are never going to be stuck. You've got, it might seem a little bit overwhelming, but we have a lot of professional painters that use our paints and um, we're competing with a lot of companies that make beautiful colours and we want to make sure that you have everything that you need and they are so clever at making sure that there are no gaps in their range, that you do have everything that you need. And these neutrals are also going to be really, really helpful for mixing if you're trying to make some of the other colours that we talk about in the other videos, the blues, the greens, etc. a bit paler. You've got all the tones that you need. They really do 
cover everything for the hop from the hobbyist to the professional painter you've got everything you need so there we go um, quick refresh chateau and putty lovely stone shade one slightly lighter one slightly darker let's move on what do we have next okay next we have bedford which is a really cool um neutral so up until this point we've only said that parchment has green undertones and now bedford is slightly darker um, more on line with putty and cathedral top, more the same kind of level of darkness as there, the same tone. But this one has green undertones. So if you're looking for something, you're looking for a sort of sagey neutral, an olivey neutral. It's still very taut, very neutral. It's not completely green, but it just has those undertones in it to tie it in. And that makes it very, I was going to say it makes it very traditional. But you know what? At the moment... All these yummy neutrals are really, really popular. You would consider an olive or a sage colour to be very traditional. But with a neutral shade, it just gives you that little bit of an edge. It is really, really interesting and really cool for a lot of your modern projects. People are, people are getting a little bit bored of grey. It's been around for years and years and years. And the move on, the new um, trend is the, the, the beige tones, the tops, those lovely soft natural colours. And Bedford is a beautiful one to do that job. Okay, so now we've talked through the whites, the creams, the neutrals, the tops. Now we're moving on to the more chocolatey, darker shades. So here we have Algonquin, Woodwick, Hazelwood, Oakham and Chocolate. And you can see there, this is, you know, what exactly what I was just talking about, about how popular all the, the browns and the tops are becoming in interior trend. That's why Fusion have given you such a lovely range here. And Algonquin, and you know what? These are wonderful. People use them as washers, as an alternative to stains. So if you water your paint down to make it thinner and more translucent, whereas normally Fusion is very opaque, you're looking for full coverage. If you add more water to it, with it being a water-based paint, you can create a wash or a stain with it. And that's what people are doing um, to create beautiful pieces of furniture um, but just to tint the colour of the wood. If the base wood isn't the exact colour that you want, you can tint it in a more modern way and make it more interesting by creating a wash with any colour. But these are really, really popular at the moment. So Algonquin is beautiful, a lovely, lovely, what does it say? An ode to all things natural and true. Algonquin is a deep top with an incredible tendency of taking on different tones depending on the light source in the room. That is super, super important. That is why I tell you to... Um, Pick your colours in your room. So take a colour card home, buy a tester and paint a tester on your bit of furniture, on your wall, on a piece of paper or whatever. You need to look at your colours in your room because they will change dependent on the lighting. So there you've got Algonquin. That is our lightest sort of taupey brown shade. And then we've got Woodwick, which if you compare them together, look at them together, it's just a little bit darker. And I would say... I was going to say a little bit pinker, but no, I just think it is just very similar, but darker... And then if you move on to Hazelwood, Hazelwood is very much like a deep sort of a grey shade, but a warm grey. So many greys have blue undertones. They're cool, they're cold. And that's why people talk about greys being sort of battleship and feeling like sort of cold and steel and industrial. But if you add a bit of warmth to your grey, then you're um, being inspired more by nature and that sort of softness. And that's what all of these tones do here. So this is... A very much either you could either call it a brown gray or a gray brown it's that lovely middle ground hazelwood is beautiful and then you've got oakum now oakum is one of the new colors that's been added um not too long ago and that is you can see it's much bronzier and darker so if you look at it compared to put it in the middle it's so here we've got let's run through again because it's easy to get confused algonquin woodwick oakum and hazelwood so you can see that oakum is warmer than hazelwood which is a little bit cooler and it's sort of on, along the lines of woodwick but darker and bronzier amazing for industrial projects um for pairing with bronzers and blacks and just yummy 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 and then last but not least we have chocolate I hope these colours are coming out well on the screen. But if not, you can look at your colour chart or your fan deck yourself and watch this video and um, be looking at the real colours in front of you and listening to my descriptions to hopefully help you understand how they all work together. So chocolate is exactly what it says it is. A lovely, deep, chocolatey shade. I would say it is more towards sort of like a plain chocolate than a milk chocolate. Lovely, dark, rich colour. And actually, it's got... It doesn't look like it when it's... Um, 
when it's in its raw form like this, but I think it's got quite warm red undertones. If you're looking for something a bit more greyed off, you want to lean towards these, whereas chocolate is a very traditional wood chocolatey tone. And especially when you water it down to create a wash, I think that the red tones come out of it then. So there you go. That is our selection. I mean, I've mixed them all up. They were in a nice little order. And now we've been chatting. They are not. But that is our selection. We've been through the neutrals all the way from white, through the creams, the tops, to the chocolatey browns. And hopefully that has helped you to understand them a little bit more. And if you're thinking about buying a couple of testers, maybe point you in the direction of which testers might be suitable for you or which colour you want to use for your project. So um, lots of love. I'm now going to go away and record the video for the blues. So um, stay tuned, check my Facebook page, check my YouTube, YouTube channel if you'd like to see the others. Happy painting, guys. Bye.